Is it possible to see dramatic, visible change in your body in just three months? The answer is yes. As a matter of fact, uh, it can actually happen a little bit sooner uh, and it can be a lot more dramatic than you might think. Now, obviously, we got to focus on the right things. So in this conversation, I'm going to give you seven ways to actually visibly change your body in 90 days in a way that's healthy in a way that's sustainable uh, and in a way that you will have fun with and enjoy and be able to follow through with for the rest of your life. But real quick, every single Friday, we send over a 100% free guide to help you drop body fat, build lean muscle uh, and get healthier than you've ever been in your life. Uh, all you got to do is click the link in the description. It's going to be the first link in the description down below uh, inside this podcast or YouTube video uh, or head to hardenathletics.com slash the Harden letters uh, and get access to the guides there. Now, let's dive in. The seven ways to visibly change your body in 90 days. Obviously, no matter how humble you are, no matter how secure you are, how, like doesn't matter you probably want to make a couple changes to your body. There is nothing wrong with that. Society a lot of times makes us believe that if you want to make any changes to yourself and the way that you look, uh, that you're vain, that you only care about looks and you're shallow and all this stuff. But nobody bats an eye if you want to get your car washed or upgraded or detailed or if you want to trim your hedges in the front yard, if you want to repaint your house, if you want to redo the kitchen. All of these things could be seen as vain and, and vanity and all that, uh, but they're not. They're widely accepted by society, but other things like wanting to improve your the way that your only body looks when you can get another car, you can get another house, you can get more shoes, you can get more clothes, but yet wanting your body to look a certain way is somehow vain. Now, listen to that. Uh, that's haters. That's people that uh, aren't willing to put in the work. Uh, and they want to cast their judgment on you uh, about what changes you want to make. You deserve to be fully confident uh, and feel great in the skin that you're in. You only will have one body for the rest of your life. You can't trade it in. You can't upgrade it. Uh, you will only have this one. So we want it to look and feel exactly how we want it to look and feel. Uh, and one of the first things that you can do to dramatically change the vis visible appearance of your body, especially around the midsection, uh, is going to be to cut out all drinks with calories. Now, we're talking about for the next 90 days. If this is something that we want to do short term, now, I truly believe that you can do this forever. Like, I, I hardly ever drink uh, drinks with calories in them. Most of my clients, uh, once we start dialing in their nutrition, they're able to scale this back really easily. But the reason being is because this is going to serve any pretty much any drinks with calories are going to serve no nutritional benefit. So they should be easy to cut. Because it's probably going to be mostly sugar, uh, either high fructose corn syrup, pure cane sugar, uh, or sugar out or sugar from alcohol. Which alcohol is, uh, if that's the drink that you're uh, having with calories in it, uh, then that should be an easy cut right there. If we're truly trying to make a difference and a change in our body over a 90 day time period, over a three month time period, that's something that you can cut out easily. Uh, your body will not suffer at all. Uh, you might get a couple of sugar crashes, but uh, in the end. You're going to be much better for it. These are empty calories. Our body cannot do anything with the calories from soda, from sweet tea, from fruit juice, from alcohol. Uh, all this does is spike our blood sugar, uh, spikes our stress levels, uh, makes it harder to drop body fat. And once you get rid of these calories, you're going to probably shave, especially if you're having drinks with calories in them multiple times a day, uh, you're probably drinking upwards of three to 500 calories uh, in sugar, essentially, or alcohol, if that's your, you know, uh, drink of choice. Uh, so just by cutting that, you put yourself at a pace to drop about one pound of body fat per week. And the way that it's going to visibly change uh, is because a lot of times, especially if it's carbonated drinks that you're having like sodas and like alcohol, if you stop drinking it, uh, you're going to get rid of a lot of inflammation in the gut and it's going to immediately change the appearance of your midsection and going to make it look a lot smaller than it probably looks right now because you're going to get get rid of a lot of bloat. You're going to get rid of a lot of inflamed, uh, inflamed areas uh, inside that midsection. So uh, cutting out all drinks with calories is probably the first place that I'd start. And then the second thing that I'm going to do uh, is go do workouts that improve upper body posture 
and upper body strength. Reason being because posture is a big part of how we look. If you want to look better, if you want clothes to fit better, uh, if you want more confidence, all that good stuff, your posture plays a monumental factor in the way that you look. A lot of times I've seen it time and time again with clients, they come in and their shoulders are hunched over. They look weak. They look frail. They look skinny fat. It's like your shoulders are hunched and rounded over uh, and it just doesn't look good. It doesn't make clothes look good. It doesn't make things fit well. Uh, and it's really a big area of concern. Uh, so what we do uh, is start building up the muscles in the back of the body, your uh, traps, your uh, rhomboids, your lats, your rear delts. We build these up. And what happens over time is that that roundedness, it starts to flatten out and you start to get a more square, even posture. And when this happens, makes it look so much better. Uh, when your shoulders are squared, they're not rounded, your back is flat instead of rounded at the top, it's gonna make you look dramatically, dramatically better. Uh, and you can do things like face pulls, uh, things like bent over rolls, things like lat pull downs, things like rear delt flies. Those are four of the top exercises that I would add. If you look in the mirror and you see yourself and like, hey, my shoulders are really rounded over and I'm kind of hunched over and I don't like the way that this looks, add those four exercises into your routine, promise it'll work wonders. Uh, the number three uh, is going to do, uh, is going to be full body stretching twice a day. This one goes back into the postural thing. Uh, a lot of times we look a certain way uh, because our body's just tight. You're sitting down for eight hours a day at, at your desk at work. Uh, you're sitting down for an hour at a time commuting to and from work. Then you come back and you sit down on the couch some more. Like, like you're just constantly in this balled up, hunched up position that's atrophying and tightening your muscles around your body. Uh, and you're just not fully stretched out. And you, that doesn't look good. You look like you're balled up. Uh, your your stomach and your core muscles are tightly bunched together, which looks bad. Your shoulders are rounded. Your hips are pushed forward. All these things that happen just as a result of not being loose. Uh, so having a full body stretching routine, this doesn't take anywhere but five to 10 minutes every single day. Uh, I'll actually link something if you're uh, listening on the YouTube or podcast. Uh, I'll link something that I think is very effective. But five to 10 minutes a day uh, of a stretching routine to start your day as soon as you get up uh, and then right as you end your day uh, is going to dra dramatically improve your posture as well. Uh, you probably gain a couple inches in height, like, but no, seriously, like you will start to stand up straighter. Everything's going to start to line up better. You're going to feel a lot better. Uh, and all of these things will help and improve the way that you look. Uh, and the number four is going to be doing workouts that improve core strength. This one kind of goes hand in hand with number one, where we talked about getting rid of calories uh, from drinking uh, and how it'll affect and impact the way that your midsection looks. Improving your core strength will also impact the way that your belly fat looks and, and actually help to cinch in your waistline uh, and make it look a lot flatter. Reason being is because a lot of times when you have a weak core, what happens is you'll get or develop what's called an anterior pelvic tilt where basically your low back sinks in. And when your low back sinks in, your stomach protrudes out because your low back is weak, your core is weak. So now the only way that the, the way that your body compensates is by pushing your core out and forward so that you can use your hip flexors a little bit more uh, and take some of the tension off of your core muscles because they're so weak. But when you start to strengthen those muscles, what's going to happen is you'll naturally tighten up. So now that protruding gut that you have due to a weak core is going to slowly start to cinch in and cinch in and cinch in until it becomes more flat instead of rounded. And like I said, this is going to make you look dramatically better. You couple this with cutting out sugary drinks, alcohols, things like that, you're going to see a dramatic difference in your midsection, which I'm sure uh, is something that you really want to spotlight and target. Some of my favorite exercises for improving core strength uh, and getting rid of that anterior pelvic tilt are going to be dead bugs. Um, it's going to be bird dogs uh, and then glute bridges. Those are three of my favorite uh, that I would include inside a training routine uh, if you truly wanted to improve uh, your core strength and get rid of that tilt so that you can straighten up a bit more. Uh, and the number five is going to be the to follow the foods that your body digests well. This sounds logical and it sounds like it makes sense when you say it, but so many people eat things that give them an inflammatory response that their digestive system hates, that breaks them out, whatever. So like you have to be really cognizant 
of when your body digests food well versus when it doesn't. Because if your digestion isn't going well, that also means inflammation. Inflammation is going to happen in the face, it's going to happen in the arms, in the chest, in the stomach, all over your body. You're going to be inflamed uh, because of poor digestive response to whatever foods that you're consuming. Uh, and that's going to make you look worse. It's going to make you look bigger. It's going to make you look, uh, you know, swollen almost. And nobody wants that. You want to be, you want your skin clear. Uh, you want your stomach to be not bloated. You want to feel great. That's what you want. So pay attention to the foods that when you consume them, you feel better. The foods that you consume them and you're either running to the bathroom or you can't go to the bathroom uh, or you just you, you realize that, hey, my face breaks out. Like for me, uh, pizza is one of those things. I actually love pizza. But if I eat a slice of pizza uh, and I don't wash my face uh, that night, when I wake up in the morning, I'll have two or three pimples like I'm a teenager. Uh, and as I know, because all the grease in the pizza uh, is breaking me out, it's inflammatory for me and for my skin. I know that, so I'm cognizant of that. I don't eat pizza that often, but when I do eat pizza, I make sure that I wash my face very well. I don't. I make sure I don't fall asleep at the end of the night and forget to wash my face. So it's like little things like that. You have to be aware and cognizant of certain foods, and even foods that you think might be healthy might not necessarily be beneficial for you. If you eat, say, broccoli, for example, uh, and you just have nonstop gas, like you're super gassy, you're super bloated. Uh, maybe you feel kind of backed up or whatever the case may be, even though broccoli is a healthy food, it might not, not might not necessarily be good for you. And that's what we're looking for. Pay close attention to the foods that you're eating. Eat more of what makes you feel good and less of what makes you feel bad. And paying attention to your digestion is probably the best way to do that. Don't pay attention to your taste buds. Our taste buds lie to us. Our taste buds tell us what's good. Uh, what, our, what our taste buds tell us is good uh, typically isn't going to be the best for us. Uh, so pay more attention to your digestion. Pay more attention to how your body feels. Your digestion and your energy will tell the story. Foods that digest better and you feel more energized after eating them, eat more. Foods that you feel the opposite, eat less. And number six is going to be take two to three walks a day. This is great for posture and great for digestion. All things that make you look better uh, and digestion, of course, if we can improve our digestion, we are going to get rid of inflammation. When we get rid of inflammation, uh, we're going to strip off uh, a lot of the bloat that that makes us look the way like it makes your arms look bigger. It makes your face look bigger. It makes your stomach look bigger. Like uh, if we can get rid of the inflammatory response in our body uh, from certain foods or whatever. It's going to be very helpful. And then just from a posture perspective, this helps us get out of that bunched up position that we're always in, in a chair, uh, you know, at work or, you know, in the car uh, on the way to or from work or on a plane uh, back and forth from, you know, work meetings or vacations or trips or whatever. Like getting out of that bunched position as often as possible uh, is going to work wonders for the way uh, that your body looks in your overall posture. Uh, and then number seven, last but not least, this is probably the most impactful one on the list uh, is going to be to pick one, just one compound exercise uh, and try to get a little stronger in it each and every week. Uh, this could be squats, it could be deadlifts, bench press, lat pull downs. Basically, the goal uh, is to put muscle on your body. You put muscle on your body or you you send signals to your body uh, to build up like, hey, I need more muscle. Uh, your body starts to build up more muscle that burns calories and it increases your metabolism. And then once the muscle is actually built, uh, you'll burn more calories and increase metabolism. And as this continues to happen, you will continuously drop body fat. Your posture will improve. Your body's going to place. Things are going to sit the way that you want them to sit. Uh, things are going to be tight and toned the way that you want them to be tight and toned. But you have to get strong first. You have to get strong. And the best way to do that is through compound movements. It's not from, oh, I want to drop belly fat or I want a more defined and toned midsection. So let me do a bunch of crunches or uh, I want bigger biceps. So let me do a bunch of bicep curls. Not saying that those exercises are impactful and that you shouldn't train isolation exercises. What I'm saying is building muscle. And that's part. That's what toning up is for, for my ladies listening. especially uh, I know that building muscle kind of sounds like a scary phrase, but building muscle and toning up is the same thing. Toning up is just building muscle. Uh, building muscle happens with the, the louder the signal that you can send to your body, the more muscle and the faster and the more efficient you're going to build it. What happens with crunches and bicep curls and stuff like that, because it only works one muscle group, it sends a very 
small, a very quiet signal. So you might tone up a little bit. You might build a little bit of muscle up in those areas, but it's not going to send a signal to your body to continuously build muscle and get stronger. Uh, what we want is a loud signal. You want something that screams, something that yells, hey, I need more muscle. I need more definition. I need more strength. Compound lifts, exercises that work one, two, three, four, five, six different muscle groups at a time send a very loud signal to the body to build up more lean muscle. And that's why you want to prioritize them. So to recap, cut out all drinks with calories. Do workouts that improve your upper body strength and posture. Uh, do full body stretching twice a day. Do workouts to improve your core strength so that you can get rid of the anterior pelvic tilt that makes your stomach kind of protrude out. Uh, and then follow foods that your body likes. Get rid of the ones that it doesn't. Take two to three walks a day uh, and then pick one compound exercise uh, and try to get a little stronger in it every single week. These are the seven things that I would do to visibly change your body over the next 90 days. If you follow these seven things and you stay consistent with them over a 90 day time frame, you are going to look dramatically different. You're going to be uh, the talk of right now. I think we're about basically about three months out for Christmas uh, from Christmas at the time of this recording. Uh, you're going to be the talk of the, the, the Christmas gathering like Girl, what have you been doing? Man, what's your workout routine? Man, what's your diet? Girl, what what have you been eating? Like, oh, girl, you look amazing. Like, that's going to be the conversations uh, that you're going to have. And you're going to do it in a way that you're going to be proud of. You're not going to have to hide. Like, you you didn't take weight loss pills. You didn't uh, do this cleansing or this fruit diet or any crazy stuff that you're afraid to admit because you know it's not sustainable. You, you're going to be able to, to, to hold your head high knowing that you got to this end goal, you got to this re result, doing sustainable things, doing things that are long-term beneficial and healthy for your body, uh, and doing things that you're actually going to enjoy and not dread and hate. So that's it. That's all, Squall. Hopefully, you guys got a lot of value out of this conversation. Like I said at the top, we send over a free guide every single Friday, helping you get in amazing shape. Click the first link in the description to make sure that you grab that. And if you've been listening to uh, this podcast or YouTube, follow me on LinkedIn and you're like, hey, you know what? I think it's time that that I get the help that I need to get to my goals. Uh, you can click the second link in the description. Take our transformation quiz. Let us know what's going on with you, what your goals are, what your struggles are. Uh, and we'll craft a game plan right there with you side by side uh to help you get in amazing shape and we're going to walk you through it and hold you accountable to the process every single day so that's it that's all appreciate you guys tuning in make sure you subscribe subscribe and turn notifications on so that you do not miss any more uploads and i will see y'all in a couple of days peace